Let's draw. Hello and welcome to another show. This time, the long format. I figured mostly people just uh, skip through the video. I'm guessing because that's what I do when I watch it. I'm not interested in watching it, you know, slowly unfold. I guess somebody might be if they were curious about how the technique works specifically uh, for me. Well, here we are. You can skip to wherever you want. Uh, so there's a it's a it's a double length than before. So wherever you do skip to, you can watch it unfold maybe more slowly. I suppose. Anyway, um, so here I am. I'm using uh, Clip Paint Studio. I'm using the 3D uh, character as a mannequin and a 3D model uh, I downloaded from the internet, which said it was free to use. And I'm sketching uh, what I'm going to draw this drawing or digital painting. He's taking the ideas I had from before with uh, working in the layers with the shading and the alternating between particle and soft shading. And you see later a little bit more effects on top of that. I'm trying to bring it all together in uh, a complete drawing. Overall, it took around 12 hours, I guess maybe a tiny bit more. Who knows? Well, I did some sketches before, I had this idea about um, a cyberpunk character, but he has the head of a unicorn. And I figured that, you know, we got people dressing up as animals today. Once the technology is available, they'll probably, they're going to get animal heads. They're going to get animal body implants. Well, at least in a cyberpunk setting, that's possible. Uh, we don't know what uh, society would be like, so this is really a projection of our own society. Uh, whatever, it's just a drawing anyway. So, I really liked, I saw on Forgotten Weapons, the presentation about the design, the functionality of the Arctic Warfare sniper rifle as it was used by the British military. I thought it was pretty cool. And I thought, that's a that's an appropriate gun for a unicorn because it's kind of special and it's also highly appreciated. Um, I guess, I don't really know, but it appears that's the case. And already in the sketch, you can see the style is like a biker or uh, some kind of military um, character. Maybe he listens, he likes to listen to rock and roll, to heavy metal. Maybe that's his deal. So, um, then the background. And um, just a few big elements, I don't want to take too much attention with the background, and also I don't want it to be too much work, because I need to, I don't have um, a lot of spare time to use in drawing, and I have to make good use of it. And of course, always you could always work more in a drawing, or in any painting, and keep investing more and more effort into it, and it will gradually improve, but, you know, you got to ask yourself, what's the cutoff when they move on to the next thing? Uh, how much uh, is enough? Anyway, now uh, we can see the value sketch. I'm doing a sketch uh, to figure out how bright or dark something is going to be, so I can use it later as a cue something just to see what it looks like with a bit of color into it. I thought about using uh, like colored lighting as a final effect so I was kind of keeping this uh, color overlay on top 
But in the end, I did something different and uh, actually used some sort of colored lighting, but not in the same way. And you will see later. So it doesn't matter, it's just to help me, you know, get started. And um, in this technique, I'm, instead of doing all the flats all over, uh, going over everything, and scanning everything, you know, doing flats, doing the shades, doing uh, the rendering. In this drawing, I decided uh, to keep my motivation up to make every part uh, complete or try to push it as far as I can. That uh, I think that part is going to be obviously thinking that in the end, I'll probably go over things. Some of the things actually I don't go over as exhaustively on the first pass because some things are not important as other things or their expression doesn't require the same amount of, um, of labor um, yeah so there's that very pleased with how the jacket came out yeah, that looks, that looks pretty nice. That's a good effect. Not very good at drawing hands. I mean, I've gotten better with it, but uh, 3D mannequin really helps me understand the shape, the shapes. It's a bit different. You know, it's not exactly the same. It's not tracing it. Exactly, but there's no shame in tracing either. You know, the great masters use a technique called camera obscura, where they uh, use the, the type of primitive projection to get the perspective and uh, anatomical detail just exactly right. It's a tool. It's not if somebody thinks it's cheating. That's their opinion. I'm using a tool to do a job. That's my opinion. So here, for example, on the gloves, they don't have a lot of depth of shading because they're already pretty dark. I don't want it to be just a black mess. But they have uh, the specular lighting, or the light that's being reflected directly towards the viewer. Looking at the shading on the shirt at this stage, I'm reminded in a positive way by some early computer art with uh, lithering as an effect to achieve uh, shading and lighting. There's something pleasing about that to me. A uh, shame is that in um, the resized image fit for the computer screen uh, doesn't show up so much. Suppose I could crop it more tightly if I wanted it to be more prominent. I guess it, it's a good idea, but it's not that important. You could order a print of this uh, image on uh, Redbubble, which is like a merchandise artist. Um, I get some kind of fee out of everything they sell. It's really not a lot of money, but you know, it's something. And if somebody wants it, that option is available. I can't make it available in other ways, so you can have this if you want it. I think it would make a cool poster or or sticker, I don't know. You will note also on the side here, I'm making everything in distinct layers and also working sort of methodically with what layers everything gets. Layer of shading, layer of uh, actually three layers of shading and 
and light and things like that. Some um, some materials behave differently, so they get different lighting solutions, like the metallic parts and the hard surfaces reflecting light differently. It's always fun to do that bit of colored lighting. Where I just like doing it if I do an, a glowing eye. Here I got confused about how many fingers <laughs> yeah, That's pretty silly. Uh, publicizing the drawing stream for anybody who wants to tune in. If I was drawing, maybe I'd, and I had like dual screens, I might put up somebody else drawing next to my screen just to see, you know, to get motivated and every once in a while. Turn my head and look, ah, that's where they're at. It's interesting what they did or whatever. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Maybe, uh, you know, not something that you can watch because it is sort of boring to watch the drawing process. It's very slow. You're not seeing the impressive results very fast. Some types of drawing are suited for it because they're also, you know, uh, geared towards capturing the interest of the viewer in that way. I do like how the character looks on a white background and maybe I even like it more than <coughs> as you will see later with the, the actual background itself. I don't think I have the patience to do another one like this very soon but I might make a few characters on uh, neutral or white background because that does look kind of nice and uh, so far it's not you know look how long it took me to do the character up to this point maybe it's uh, five hours work I don't know This bag was very frustrating. I don't know why I couldn't figure out doing the bag <laughs> properly. And then it's kind of uh, blurred into the background and hidden and shaded. I mean, I guess it's okay. It, it just seemed out of place for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it was the color contrast. Yeah, as you'll see later, I change it. We don't have a lot to say about this. Um, I activated the perspective ruler. Oh, here we go. Using another tool, the perspective ruler, which enables me to snap uh, two lines that are going through um, lines directed to the vanishing point on the horizon line. <coughs> and that's a really good way you can really fine-tune it exactly to the angle and you know the three-dimensional grid you want to have and it really helps simplify that process for you it's going over basically the shapes that I did before but just it's more accurate and when you look at it you can see you know the, the eye sort of knows the difference if I'm if it's more accurate to an actual perspective grid, it looks better. It just does. So working on the background, and in this painting, I don't know how well I planned it, but the idea was to play with the contrasts 
and um, give some sort of uh, illuminated look or it's you know like partly in the shade partly in the light with the uh, strong contrast in some of the areas and the background uh, is sort of designed to help with that effect you can see I'm doing some experimentation I'm not entirely sure how, if it should be dark if it's because the, the idea is that it's light but also maybe very early hour maybe very late there is also lots of shade so the wall in the foreground is shaded and you let you see that I add more shading to the, to the background some details here the perspective grid and turning it on and off it's helping me a lot to get the look like things are sitting on top of each other and they're constructed from you know they're in in the perspective grid the line art and then stressing it by erasing some of it <clears throat> adding graffiti to the back wall. I know it's going to be also obscured by some things. Uh, again, I'm clearing away some of the fog so you can see that it is obscured and that added layer of something behind something gives some richness to the drawing, I feel. Here I decided to do the lighting in a way I didn't exactly do before, which is soft and overlapping beyond the contour lines because they felt really harsh and later after I saw that some contour lines do better when they're softened I actually merged the layers of what the drawing completed drawing is like and blur some of the contour lines where they're in the shade so it, it looks a little bit out of focus and I guess that's supposed to be I read somewhere or saw a video about it that it's a little bit more realistic because it's related to how we see things that some lines appear sharp to us and some lines appear soft some shapes or you know, the edges of shapes appear soft and that's realistic and it's actually very nice the way it looks on the face um, getting a feel like the light is being refracted uh, I'm enjoying it adding my signature wanted to do something a little bit special it took me a very long time to figure out how to move the mask without moving the, the painting under it never mind and uh, here we are, we're almost there And I can say that I um, quite enjoyed drawing this uh, illustration. I think it came out very nice. It could be, well, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you, I, actually I see some things I could work more on other than looking at it, but it could be a, a cover for a book. Uh, it could be an illustration inside a book, or maybe a cutscene. And everything's in layers, you know. I can, uh, you can give it even a little bit of animation, um, have a little bit of uh, parallax scrolling, you know, make the scene come alive, zooming in, zooming out, everything's uh, on separate layers, so a little bit of the effects where, you know, I blur the edges aren't available for that possibility, but everything else? You, you would hardly notice it. it was so much different. There was just little polishing touches, really. All right, so as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this process video. 
and goodbye for all eternity. Bye then. I'm not recording this again, so that's how it's going to be.